Coast to Coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex today, but he's going to be joining us at noon to talk about some amazing developments in the war between authentic media and mainstream phony media. We're also going to be joined by Paul Joseph Watson and Gerald Salenti and Anthony Gucciardi. We've got a heavy show today. There's a lot of news. Now, Paul Joseph Watson is going to be talking to us about what happened with this Turkish YouTube video that went up. They actually recorded some Turkish government and defense officials talking and planning a false flag so they could get into a war with Syria. They were going to attack their own country. And of course, once it went up on YouTube, the Turkish government's approach to that was the same as it was about a week ago when they took down all of Twitter access to Turkey. They censored YouTube access to Turkey. That was all the mainstream media talked about. What they didn't talk about was the false flag. They want to avoid talking about false flags at all costs. And anybody who talks about a false flag is demonized. But it's the way they operate. It's the same way they operate when they come up with a Patriot Act that is anything but Patriot, that's, that spies on everyone, or the Affordable Care Act, which is anything but affordable. It's one of their methods that they use over and over again. And it's about time people started waking up and looking at this. And of course, Turkey has a long history of being involved in NATO false flags. As Sibel Edmonds pointed out, they were very much involved with Operation Gladio, even though that took place in Italy. They used gangsters from Turkey, people that she said were referred to in Turkey as babas. In other words, uh, godfathers. You know, that's kind of the uh, term for a paternal father there. We've also got information about the Hobby Lobby case. That is coming up for arguments in the Supreme Court. They heard arguments a couple of days ago. They're now considering that. There were some amazing developments in that. Amazing comments by some of the Supreme Court justices. And we want to also take a look at some of the comments of people like John Stewart. Where are they coming from? And we want to look at what Hobby Lobby says themselves about that. Also, the Ukraine and the IMF. The deal is now on the table. But the Ukraine is not taking it. Of course, the guy they put in charge, Yats, as Victoria Newland likes to call him, Yatsenyuk, the guy that was the hand-picked guy for the IMF, for the globalists, for the moneyed bankers, he took the deal. But the parliament took a look at it and said, I don't know that we like an austerity program like Greece and like Spain. So maybe there's some hope there for self-government in Ukraine as these people struggle like we all do between these two rapacious gangs that are attacking us from each side. But we're going to be talking about that. Gerald Salenti is going to have information about banker suicides as well as he'll be wanting to talk to us about Russia and the Ukraine, the IMF. We have Anthony Gucciardi covering some breaking health news, nuclear issues, as well as information about GMO. You know, they like to demonize Vladimir Putin, but he came out and said, we're not going to let GMO get to the Russian people. The same day, we saw the same thing coming from Brazil. They're shutting down GMO for their people. Just earlier this week, France made the same pronouncement. They said, we're not going to, there was, there's one GMO corn strain that's authorized in the European Union, and they're going to shut that down before planting season this year. So we've got France, Brazil, Russia, people who are looking out for the interests of their people. What's happening in America? Well, in America, they just keep dumping the fluoride into the water, even though it's been outlawed in many European countries. They keep on bringing in the GMO. They're totally in control of the government. These corporations like Monsanto and others is simply about profit. We've got an article on InfoWars today about a young high school girl who took, did a science project and took some seafood and measured it with Geiger counters. And she found some amazing results that were many, many times higher than the safe level that the government had said was safe. But, of course, the Canadian government stopped looking at radiation in food quite some time ago. So you've got a high school student science project can do a better job than the FDA or the Canadian food safety inspectors. That's pretty amazing. But, of course, according to Chucky e. Schumer, you as individuals, you as bloggers, you as a high school student, shouldn't be allowed to do these types of things. You're not a real journalist. 
You know, real journalists are people who offer us real information. We're going to be right back. Stay tuned. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives Gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee. And it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press. All the while enjoying a truly great tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record, reports documented, a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base, nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield nascent iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield nascent iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Alex Jones here with a message to fellow freedom lovers. The prognosis for the entire planetary economic system runs from bad to worse. The globalist model is to shut down societies and starve patriots out until they acquiesce to the global takeover. That's why we've assembled the most vital and important preparedness items at InfoWarsShop.com. These are items that I did research on, that I personally use. We've got the life straw, so you can turn fetid water into safe water anywhere you go. The KTOR hand crank generator to charge up key equipment during power outages or out in the field. Strategic relocation, third edition by Joel Skousen. When disaster strikes by Matthew Stein. Therosafe used by Homeland Security to protect yourself during any radiological event. Hand crank shortwave AM FM radios. Everything that we've researched and found to be the best is available at InfoWarsShop.com and your purchase makes our InfoWar possible. We're getting prepared. Are you? InfoWarsShop.com there is a war it's happening now it will decide the fate of humanity the time to choose sides has come we are the resistance we are the info war welcome back to the info wars radio program alex jones radio program he's going to be joining us at the top of the hour I was just handed a piece of paper from Kurt Nemo. I was talking in the first segment about how the Ukrainian parliament had rejected the IMF offer that was put on the table. Now it appears that they have conceded to this, and he correctly points out that it's an IMF looting plan. Now, let's get a little bit of background on this. The last couple of days, it was on again and off again. First, it was accepted by the Ukrainian prime minister, Yatsenyuk, who is a globalist puppet and he was the guy you remember that victoria newland was talking to the guy she likes to call yats uh, their man on the inside of course he accepted the deal from the imf but the legislature balked initially so they didn't want it but after they applied some pressure overnight i guess they went for it this is the way reuters reported on it the last couple of days they say ukraine wins an imf lifeline as russia faces a growth slump really 
I would say it's more like a hangman's noose. They said Ukraine won a $27 billion international financial lifeline on Thursday, rushed through in the wake of Russia's annexation of the Crimea. Love how they love to keep calling it an annexation. They seceded from Ukraine, which had seceded from Russia. So if the Ukraine secession was not legitimate, or if it was legitimate, as they want to maintain it was, then of course the Crimean secession would be legitimate. But anyway, they say that the, uh, that the Russians are imploding. And this is the way it was reported by Reuters in another article. They said the Ukraine's new leaders in a step that ousted the government that had balked at it said Wednesday it would raise the price of gas for domestic consumers by more than 50 cents, 50 percent, I'm sorry, from May 1st and would raise prices further under a fixed timetable to 2018. So they're going to take control of the gas pipelines. They're going to raise the price of energy for the Ukrainians 50 percent. And that's what they were rejecting. They were rejecting that as well as other issues. Way back a, a month or two ago, we had an, a report from Forbes. They were quoting Vladimir Signorelli from Bretton Woods Research in New Jersey. He said, Yatsenyuk is the kind of technocrat you want if you want austerity. He's got a veneer of professionalism. He's the kind of guy who can hobnob with the European elite, a, Mar a Mario Monti type, unelected and willing to do the IMF's bidding. And now we see that's what they've done. Of course, the U.S. Senate's been pushing this austerity package for the Ukrainian people, wanting to turn them into Greece and Spain. And, of course, Mario Monti, the guy they're talking about, that's the guy they put in charge in Italy. And as Nigel Farage pointed out, he said, you're putting in Goldman Sachs bankers in charge of countries, and you're taking out democratically elected representatives, prime ministers. And that's what it appears is going to be happening in the Ukraine as well. We've got a busy show today. We've got, as I said before, Alex Jones is going to be joining us at noon. He's going to be talking about MSNBC getting really desperate. Their ratings dropped 24% in the last measurement from Nielsen. So they're basically going on the warpath. They tried to justify this state representative that Dan Badandi asked a question about gun control. He asked him whether or not it's constitutional. You know, if you ask a Democrat uh, there about gun control and he says, F you, I guess that's kind of like when they talked to Nancy Pelosi and they said, what's the constitutional justification for Obamacare? And she kind of stopped and said, are you serious? Yeah, you know, we are serious. We want to know what's your authority to do this. That's something, that's a discussion we ought to have. But of course, MSNBC says that that was justified simply because Dan Badandi is the guy that went to the Boston bombing and confronted them about a false flag. So you can't talk about false flags. When we had news released just yesterday about a false flag in Turkey, the mainstream media didn't talk about that. All they talked about was how Turkey censored the entire internet. Uh, sorry, not the entire internet, but the entire YouTube to keep that video from being taken down. They did that to Twitter the week before. They have these massive censorship things, but they don't talk about why they're censoring it. It's the same sort of thing we see with leaks from WikiLeaks and from Snowden documents. Instead of addressing the criminal activity that's being exposed by these whistleblowers, and that's what this video that was put up on YouTube, that's what it was. It was exposure of these guys criminally plotting a false flag attack, attacking their own men with missiles, attacking their own territory with missiles, and doing it so they could start a war. This is a strategy that governments have continually used. Paul Joseph Watson had an article on this yesterday. He analyzed how the mainstream media reported this, how they covered it up for Turkey. And we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about Turkey's involvement with NATO, how they've been involved in the past with NATO false flags, how they're now apparently the best hope that NATO and the United States has for starting a war with Syria. We know that they've been wanting to do that for quite some time. We're also going to have Gerald Salenti on the show. He's going to be talking about, I'm sure he'll want to talk about this IMF, Ukrainian situation. He's also going to talk about the banker suicides, a whole host of issues about the economy. That's Gerald Salenti coming up. We also have Anthony Gucciardi. He's going to be talking to us about health issues. But one of the stories that I wanted to cover in this sector uh, is Hobby Lobby. Now, they've been having arguments before the Supreme Court this week. And that's where they argue the side and the justices ask them questions. It's pretty amazing to see some of the questions. And it's pretty amazing to look at the media's response to this entire case. We're going to take a look at John Stewart's response to that first. We're going to look at what Slate is talking about. They say, is the contraception mandate doomed? 
They say it certainly looks that way after the Hobby Lobby argument. They're not very optimistic that they're going to get their way on this. But, you know, if you've got a government that says uh, you didn't build it, I guess that same government says you can't control it. Now, what's at stake here, of course, is Hobby Lobby.